kind of a quiet weather pattern across the United States today. But if you look right up there at the top of the screen, a big wound up system in Hudson Bay, producing blizzard conditions across parts of Nunavut. We'll have more about that shortly, but let's look at the temperature extremes around the world. Now, I'm going to be disregarding Antarctica when we do this because it's always going to be very cold, and you can see that on the screen. So we're going to focus on the civilized world from minus 50 at Dalyankir, Russia, to 113 at Mandora over the past 24 hours. And we can see what those places look like because it's good to visualize what the atmosphere is doing and what better way than to put us in that local area. So that's going to be the region around Mandora. And as far as Deliankir, that's near the cold pole, which is Oymyakon, which I think is in that valley. So it's pretty close by. And we drop the street view into Deliankir. And that's right along that Magadan Yakutsk Highway. And that's what that region looks like. So close to minus 50 there on this cold Wednesday in November. Nothing like that here in the U.S. Temperatures appear to range from about 30 in Maine to about 85 in Florida, divided by this frontal system off the Carolinas coast. We've got this migrating polar system moving through Texas and the Midwest, and we have this reinforcement of cold air coming out of central Canada. Temperatures behind that rather cool, and we'll get to that shortly. In the northeastern U.S., we do have snow coming down in northern Maine, a coastal low near Boston, temperatures rather mild around Cape Cod, dropping to those 30s in northern Maine. We do have winter storm warnings for the rest of the day from about Holton through Millinocket, Greenville, and looking for about two inches on top of what we have already. Winter weather advisories through the rest of the area. And offshore, we do have a storm warning between Nova Scotia and Maine. And we may see a little bit of light freezing drizzle in the mountains of central Pennsylvania from about Williamsport down to State College and Johnstown and into northeastern West Virginia. Some threatening looking stratocumulus at the Mount Holly Weather Service office in New Jersey. But they're starting to get some breaks in those clouds. Those are some beautiful fall colors, and I always appreciate those photos that come out of the National Weather Service offices. In the southeastern U.S., a frontal system has been making its way offshore, the tail end still moving through Orlando and Tampa, but up to the north, you can see some cold core thunderstorms along the North and South Carolina border. Might as well get a closer look at those. Yeah, that's classic cold core convection if we take a look at the upper air charts. This morning, the heights and vorticity look like this. There's that very compact trough, a strong short wave moving through the base of that, and then we advance that into the midday hours, rolling right through western South Carolina, and that brings us up to the current time. So it's rapidly progressing from west to east. And I'll show you another chart this is something new we're going to be doing, showing some of these diagnostics. This is the ageostrophic wind, indicated by the red arrows, and we've got the 300 millibar heights. And this is a pretty typical pattern. We've got ageostrophic divergence out ahead of this trough and convergence on the backside, and just kind of a general flow of that ageostrophic flow from the front to the back. And that's about what we would expect with these conceptual models of troughs. There's that ageostrophic divergence on the front side, convergence on the back, and the flow going from front to back. But looking at the 300 millibar chart, it does look like some left front quadrant dynamics right out there to the left and ahead of this jet max. This is going to be for about noon, 1 p.m. or so. And then this evening, those dynamics rapidly move offshore, carries the divergent left front quadrant eastward to the barrier islands of North Carolina. So hopefully you're learning a little bit about dynamics as we go through this. And what does that mean? Well, this divergent area 
that we've been focusing on. That's supporting pressure falls. And you can see that we do have a indication of a closed low somewhere in here. I'm not sure that's there, so I didn't really draw that. But definite strong pressure falls working on that part of the air mass. And this is an area of cold advection. We would expect the pressures to be rising back there, but that upper level lift is working against it. So we have this troughing and this area of low pressure. In the south United States, getting downslope flow, temperatures coming up to about 70 degrees around Lamar and Pueblo, and 65 around Clayton. But down to the south, look at that, down there in Mexico. In Zacatecas, there's a town called Sombre Verete, I think, something like that. 2,300 meters, 7,700 feet, so it's pretty high up there in the plateau region. Cold air mass and steep lapse rates producing some snow. So it's kind of ironic. You go from 70s in Colorado to snow on the very same map at the very same time. In the northern U.S., cold front advancing southward from Montana through North Dakota, passing Rapid City and switching those winds around. And that will advance south, and we do have winter storm watches in central and northwestern Wyoming for Thursday and Friday morning, expecting 6 to 12 inches of snow there. Winds out of the north at 20 to 30 miles an hour from Yellowstone to Casper and down to Lander and Jackson. And then tomorrow, late Thursday and Friday, winter storm warning around Scotts Bluff to Cheyenne, up to Douglas and over to Wright and Rollins. And they're looking for 4 to 8 inches of snow and blowing snow with winds up to 50 miles an hour there. In the southwestern U.S., cold air is sagging south. Temperatures are in the 60s this afternoon and in the 50s in Nevada. And with that air being very dry, you can see the dew points from 40s down to the teens. It's rapidly going to lose heat as we get nighttime cooling. And temperatures will come down to freezing in the Kern Desert and the San Joaquin Valley. And in the northwestern U.S., they will be getting some of that snow as well. We do have winter weather advisories through much of Idaho. And I think the 700 millibar chart is where we really see this. Now, this is going to be the frontal zone, the warm front about right here, and the rest of it in occlusion heading to the north. And then going into tomorrow, that frontal transition zone sinking south, low pressure around Salt Lake City into southern Idaho. So that means the flow is going to tend to be out of the south or southeast. And that's a setup for isentropic lift, basically overrunning. And with that cold air coming down, that lifts the potential temperature surfaces upwards. So that's another source of lift. And we've also got the destabilization with steeper lapse rates working across the area. And also upslope flow. See that flow out of the east? That goes from lower to higher elevations, and that's somewhat coincident there with the cold conveyor belt. Areas above 6,500 feet will get 4 to 9 inches of snow, and below that maybe about 1 to 3, and those winds will be gusting there as well. Then heading up into Alaska, it is stormy once again in the Gulf of Alaska. Back on Monday, they had a blizzard around Juneau up to Skagway and Haines. That's cleared out. Warm air advection has replaced that and temperatures are up to 47 there in whatever station that is. I'm not familiar with all of them. But as high as 43 there at Middleton Island and 40 on the Kenai Peninsula. And temperatures have moderated a little bit out there in the interior of Alaska. Then heading out into Canada, blizzard is underway. In the Hudson Bay region, 970 millibar low south of Coral Harbor, and we've got that strong northerly gradient. You can see those gusts up there, 48 knots, which is going to be around 55 to 56 miles an hour, and pretty strong there around the Boothia Peninsula as well. So here's where we're at late this afternoon. The surface fronts located about like that cold air advection into Montana and the Dakotas. And I think there's another area of enhanced cold air advection. You could probably put a secondary front back here 
I think the main cold front is further to the south somewhere. I was not really able to resolve that. But anyway, you're going to see that weather system coming together. Let's take a look along this axis from Seattle down to northwest Mexico. Yeah, there we go. This is pretty useful. Arizona, Nevada, and you can see the higher Great Basin Plateau area, the Columbia River Basin, and I think that might be the Cascades. But we're going from north to south. And I do see maybe an elevated frontal boundary about like that, and that's going to be the jet sitting right over that frontal boundary. And I think the old frontal boundary from several days ago is right about there, but it's pretty much lost definition, just a little bit of an inversion and maybe some trapped air, trapped cold air there in the lower elevations. And then just going forward in time, you can see things moving south, that upper level front, the tilted potential temperature surfaces advancing southward, and that's that dome of cold air out there over British Columbia and Washington. And the jet moves south with that advancing cold air mass. So let's take a look at that winter storm coming together. That's where we're at right now. Pretty much centered on Boise and sinking southward. By early tomorrow, located around Mountain Home to north of Winnemucca over to Jackson Hole and starting to strengthen, starting to see some frontogenesis in here. So the precip area expands a bit. And then into tomorrow evening, this is how it looks. Most of the precip over Idaho looks like maybe down around Salt Lake City. It's in the form of rain. And then it spreads out over Wyoming into Colorado for late Thursday into Friday. So this is going to be kind of a multi-day event only starting to clear out by Saturday, although it looks like there's a lot of snow showers continuing in the mountains of Colorado for Saturday. And we can see that that cold air has advanced into the southern plains, high pressure across the Midwest. This is a big cold high, pushing cold air into West Texas, New Mexico, and into the Gulf. And there's probably a stationary front through here, Maybe some gap winds coming through the passes around Albuquerque and El Paso. Then we get to the end of the NAM run. Some freezing rain starting to break out around Altus, Oklahoma. So certainly some cold air entrenched in the southern plains. And then over the weekend, just a big polar high all the way from Seattle to Washington, D.C. Areas along the Canada border getting kind of a westerly, southwesterly flow, and areas to the south getting a northeasterly flow. And you're probably wondering what's happening with hurricane prospects. We are just about at the end of the season. Usually it shuts down by Thanksgiving. So this is the week for that. Still a little bit of weak activity going on. This is that detrimental effects chart you probably remember from August and September. Blue corresponds to high shear, which is, at these levels, it's destructive for tropical cyclone formation. And brown is indicating dry air. It's too dry to support organized convection. So a lot of shear pouring out across the Atlantic and a lot of dry air as well. The only favorable area way down there near Costa Rica and Panama. And you can see there's not much change. Just a lot of shear pouring out across the Atlantic is that subtropical high across Bermuda. That's all broken down. So we're getting the prevailing westerlies across the North Atlantic Ocean Basin. So we are pretty much shut down for tropical weather at this point. And this time of year, we are focused on Arctic air. So we look up there in Canada and the Arctic regions. And we've got the thickness on here, 1,000 through 500 millibar thickness. So those values become important. When they start dropping below 510, like you see right here, that indicates some bitter polar air. Now that's not directly a function of temperature. It's also a function of the depth of the cold air. So this kind of averages out both and corresponds pretty closely to the potential for some wintry, frigid, bitter air. 
So what we see here, there is a lot of ridging across western Canada. Five tens from Nunavut, Northwest Territories, northward. But the question is, does that come down? Now we do have northerly flow in place. A lot of times it will rotate out to the Great Lakes, Quebec, and Ontario. So let's see what happens. Yeah, we've got cold air coming down through the weekend and into early next week. That's the Polar Express coming down into Minnesota. And those 510s are making it down into North Dakota and Minnesota. And they were in the 70s just a few days ago, several days ago, I think. So we are coming into a cold period for next week, for the northern U.S. at least, and maybe the northeastern region. You can see we do have that northwesterly flow. The question is, does it recharge going into November 28th, 29th? Don't really see high pressure across this area. That's kind of the key to pushing that air south. And you can see the pressures are running about 10 08 to 1016. Not very impressive. Although we've got this new system coming together, this could cause some changes. We do get some anticyclogenesis out there, 1030 millibars. The 510 expands into Manitoba, but it's kind of a meager push of cold air. And this one does swing into Canada. Now, some of it does make it south, but that's not the bitterly cold air. So I think we're still waiting for maybe sometime in December before we get true winter weather across the U.S. So we'll just have to stay tuned and see how things work out. Now I did see up there in Greenland, this was kind of interesting. The GFS was going for a 1070 millibar high for the 29th. Now I don't really think that'll happen because that's 160 hours out and the GFS is a little odd with pressure extremes that far out, but, you know, we'll watch it. That could represent a lot of cold air formation across Greenland and maybe have some localized effects around Iceland and Labrador. And that's all I've got for this Wednesday edition. I want to thank our newest Patreon supporter, Allison Hendrickson. Thank you very much for stepping up and helping to support the program. I know we have a lot of viewers that don't contribute anything and if you can't do that, I, I understand. But if you're able to make that support and help keep the program going, it is very much appreciated. All right, we'll see you back here on Friday for another edition of Forecast Lab. Take care and stay warm and enjoy your Thanksgiving. We'll see you in a couple days. Bye-bye. <music>